Welcome to another video. It took me a while, a great deal of time to figure out how to solve this equation, but ultimately I solved it and I'm happy. Sometimes some of these um, Olympiad problems are hard to figure out, not because they're difficult, it's just that you're not thinking of what to do, but as soon as you think of what to do, and you apply it, it just becomes so easy. And that was what happened. I kept thinking about it and ultimately I found the answer. And when I was done, guess what? I said, okay, um, I actually didn't think of it. I plugged it into Wolfram Alpha and this was what the, an the answer was. Yeah, now that was not the answer that I got, but I think the Wolfram Alpha algorithm worked it out that way and that cannot be the answer if it's an Olympiad problem. It has to be something that is easy to understand and what I have as answer is easy to understand and I'm gonna show you. Let's get into the video. The very first thing I decided when I saw the problem is that because it is a cubic equation, it must have three solutions. I always tell myself that. And if it must have three solutions, two of them may be the same or all three may be different solutions. But none of the methods that I have or that I know worked. Okay, I couldn't see it as a difference of two cubes. I tried to generate difference of two cubes, but it just didn't work. And then I said, maybe if I distribute this X, I might be able to rearrange and factor. So I did that. So this is what happened. I did X cubed minus three X. This would be minus square root of three X plus three is equal to zero. Now, if we try to find things that would go, because this is the pro this and this are the problem that I have actually. If I try to put this and this together, if I factor out x, I'm gonna have x squared minus three here. But if, what would I factor here? There is no x squared minus three. Um, yeah, and I'm not factoring out the same thing. So, it's a problem. Now, and this is where I started thinking, what if this square root is the main problem? Because actually this is a problem. I don't think that you find it um, as a common thing to have the coefficients of x being irrational. Most of the equations we solve are rational and then our answers may be irrational. So I said, what if I treat these, this as another variable and this is the square of this variable. Can I do so, can I, is it easier to see something to factor? And that was when my eyes were opened. Okay, so I got, I said, let y be equal to the square root of three. So watch this. Now I have, this became x cubed minus you see the square root of three, this simply means that y squared will be equal to three. If I square both sides, so instead of writing three here, I'm going to write y squared x. Here I'm going to write y, and here I'm going to write x plus y squared equals zero. Now I want you to start looking at things you could see. Now we need to find some kind of factoring somewhere here. You see, because we've written this as a square, it is easier for you to see difference of two squares if you take out one x from both terms. So we can see this as if I take out x, I'm gonna have x squared minus y squared. What can I take out from this? I can take out negative y minus y and if I I'm going to have x minus y remaining equals zero. 
Now you get excited when you get this thing factored if what is here is also what is here. But at this point, this is not this. But I see this inside this because this is the difference of two squares that I can further break this down so that I have x times, this is difference of two squares, x minus y, x plus y minus y times x minus y is equal to zero. That's it. Now I see x minus y here, I see x minus y here. I can factor out one x minus y term and this guy that gave me trouble from the beginning is gone. Okay, so what we have now is if I take this out, so I take one out from here and here, I'm gonna end up with x minus y times, what, what's gonna be left? If I take this out factored, I'll have x times x plus y, x times x plus y minus, oh, there'll be y remaining, minus y, and this is equal to zero. Let's clean this up. So we have x minus y times, this is x squared plus xy minus y. Is there anyone watching this video who doesn't know how to solve this? Remember the assumption we made, we said let y be aha, uh -huh, the square root of 3. So this is x minus the square root of 3 times x squared plus x times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3 times x minus the square root of 3 is equal to 0. By the, product, by the zero product rule, the product of two numbers can only be equal to zero if one of them is zero or both of them are zeros. So we know that x minus the square root of three is equal to zero or x squared plus the square root of three x minus the square root of three is equal to zero. This gives us the first answer right? x is equal to the square root of 3. Remember I told you at the beginning we have to get three answers. Well, the two other answers are coming from this quadratic equation even though it has radical or what you call irrational coefficients. So what should we do? Well, it's going to be or. Let's call this x1 actually. So let's say there's x1, there's x2, there's x3. Let's find x2 and x3. Well, we have to use the quadratic formula here. So we know that x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared. What is b squared here? It's three minus four ac. That's gonna be four times one times c. What is c? c is minus three, minus, sorry, square root of three. Okay, everything, hey, Something is wrong with my formula. X equals minus B. Minus B equals minus B. And what is B? I have to rewrite this. So here it is, rewritten, and that's it. It's minus B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four AC. Our A is one here, and this is our C minus square root of three, all over two times A, two times A is just one. So we can say from here, if we clean this up, this is gonna be three plus four rad three. That's what's gonna be up there. So we can say that X one is equal to the square root of three. We can say that X two equals um, just what it is here, negative square root of three plus the square root of three plus four root three all over two. And our x three is going to be negative square root of three minus the square root of three plus four square root of three all over two. This is the solution to this problem. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.